In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our one true God. Greetings, everybody. My name is Archbishop Gregory, head of the Synod of the Genuine Orthodox Church of America. And we are offering this series for people who are looking for the truth. This topic is going to be about ecumenism and world orthodoxy. And we're going to try and explain how 260 million people who call themselves orthodox found themselves infected with the heresy of ecumenism. Let us start by talking about Greece and the turn of the century and Russia in the turn of the century. Everybody had high hopes that this new century, the, <clears throat> the 20th century, is going to be wonderful with science and technology increasing. But in reality, it turned to be a disaster. Because what happened? We're not going to talk now about the disaster that happened in Russia, behind the Iron Curtain, what happened to the church there. That's, that's a disaster by itself. But the Tsar, let's put up a photograph of the the Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II, the, the protector of orthodoxy, was taken away. He was taken away. He was killed, martyred, along with his family, and well, along with the right believing, confessing, bishops of Russia. That happened at the beginning of the 20th century. But what happened in Greece? Something that's shameless because Patriarchs were elected to Constantinople, to, to the Patriarchate of Constantinople. And what were they? <clears throat> All of a sudden we saw the infection into the church of masonry. Now, you cannot separate I see the connection is very, very clear. Masonry came into the church through the bishops, through the bishops who had no right whatsoever uh, to fall away from the church. And so, in Greece, Freemasonry was condemned. And let me read some of the condemnations of Freemasonry and explain a little bit what it is from the Russian church abroad, our church. Because we recognize ourselves, and rightly so, as a remnant of the Russian church abroad. Because when communism came, the Russian bishops that were outside the Iron Curtain formed their own higher ecclesiastical authority with the blessing of Patriarch Deacon, and they had to live outside of Russia. Our Council of Bishops in 1932, in their epistle 
begins, quote, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Freemasonry is a secret international organization to struggle against God, Christianity, and all national governments, especially Christian governments. Then, one year later, the Church of Greece officially Official statement begins, Freemasonry is not simply a philanthropic union or a philosophical school, but constitutes a mystagogical system which re reminds us of the ancient heathen mystery religion and cults from which it descends and is their continuation and regeneration. Freemasonry cannot be at all compatible with Christianity. So therefore, we, the bishops of the Genuine Orthodox Church of America, states, state that Freemasonry is a religion that no Orthodox Christian should adhere to or accept its teaching nor claim membership in it or any organization that derives its existence from it. Orthodoxy is the only holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Now, this understanding of orthodoxy, I believe that the bishops who were infected with masonry are ashamed of. They are ashamed of orthodoxy because this is how we believe. In the creed, it says one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Orthodoxy is the only holy Catholic, meaning universal, apostolic church where a man may seek light and salvation. There is no other God than our one God worshipped in Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is no other path to the kingdom than through true Christianity. There is no true religion other than the one founded by our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other philosophy greater than the gospel. There is no other priesthood than that of the Orthodox Church. And there is no other baptism or initiation other than that of our Church. Therefore, let it be known to all who seek the truth the Orthodox Church does not condone any affiliation with this secret religion organization slash organization. If one is a member of a Masonic Lodge, he loses his membership in the Orthodox Church. For St. Paul distinctly preaches, What communion hath light with darkness? And what connection is there between a believer and an unbeliever? This is what our church issued in 2008. The Synod of the Genuine Orthodox Church of America. 
because in this age of enlightenment, this, this new age, people who were bishops were ashamed of the confession of faith of the Orthodox Church, and they were bishops of the Orthodox Church. So they accepted this idea of ecumenism, that every church in the world, every church, whatever it is, has some truth in it. And therefore, we have to bring all of these different churches together, and voila, then we will have the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and that is foolishness. They were ashamed. Our Savior said, Whosoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this generation, the adulterous and sinful one, also the Son of Man shall be ashamed of him whenever he should come in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. But these bishops, they didn't, they disregarded all of this. They disregarded this and joined the Masonic Lodge. Who were the notable ones? Miletius, Metataxis, Patriarch, Patriarch of Constantinople. And then after him, <clears throat> Bishops in Greece, Chrysostom, Papadopoulos, these are all Masons. And this poison spread and took to now, because it would be fa safe to say that they're all Masons, all of them. Patriarch Constantinople, the present one. Patriarch of Antioch, Patriarch of Alexandria, Patriarch of Jerusalem. They're all involved in masonry. And so, what is it? They believe masonry more than they believe in orthodoxy. What is masonry? Taken from the books of masonry. This is Albert Pike on the famous book that was printed in 1906. <clears throat> the Morals and Dogmas of Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. Quote, Masonry is that religion around whose altars the Christian, the Jew, the Muslim, the Hindu, the followers of Confucius and the Zoroasters can assemble as brethren and unite in prayer. Oh no, <clears throat> that's forbidden for an Orthodox Christian to unite in prayer but it's not forbidden for a Freemason. So if your bishop is a Freemason, you may see him have ecumenical gatherings with all of these reprobates. Consider the quote from a, a more contemporary. <clears throat> this is instruction, the manual of instruction used by Masons in the state of Kentucky. Quote, Masonry makes no profession of Christianity. It looks forward to the time when the labor of our ancient brethren shall be symbolized by the erection of a spiritual temple in which there shall be but one altar and one worship, 
one common altar of masonry on which the books of the Quran, the Holy Bible, and all the others, I can't even pronounce them, the books of all of these shall lie on this altar, untouched by sacrilegious hands, and at, and at whose shrine the Hindu, the Persian, the Assyrian, the Chaldean, the Egyptian, the Chinese, the Mohammedan, the Jew, and the Christian may kneel with one united voice celebrating, celebrate the praise of the supreme architect of the universe. But they don't mention who he is because he is not our Lord and God, Savior, Jesus Christ, for them. Masonry is a religion that has its own altars, its own priesthood, its own temples, its own services, and the name of Jesus Christ, or Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is never, ever mentioned. How can anyone be a Mason? Orthodoxy has condemned masonry and shame on them shame on them who have joined this religion whether they are bishops or priests or lay people it's an absolute disgrace if you deny the church and you become a mason you become a mason you're not an orthodox christian but it didn't happen that way because Masons were elected to be patriarchs and they th perhaps they thought they have to stay up with the times. Well, orthodoxy, they must have thought, does not stay up with the times. What we have here are the photographs of some of the patriarchs. And it says, the great lodge honored the first great teacher of Greece and the four patriarchs, members of the Masonic order, by posting their photographs in all the lodges of Greece and Cyprus. And here they are. Who are they? Patriarch of Alexandria, Photius I, died in 1923. Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople, Vasilios III, died in 1929. Ecumenical Patriarch Miletius IV, the notorious one, died in 1935. And the Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople, Athenagoras the I, died in 1972. They placed these great masons, placed their photographs in all the lodges of Greece and Cyprus. So the bottom line is in the early years of this century, this fact that all the patriarchs and archbishops of the Greeks, they were Masons. It was a known secret, but they were not brought to any trial or justice. They were not punished for their stupidity. They became Freemasons and somehow imagined that this is going to be good. 
how could it be? Because they accepted the theology of masonry. How disgusting. And so, to be modern, they thought, we have to change the calendar. The whole Orthodox Church is on its own calendar. The ecclesiastical calendar of the Church. Which is commonly called the old calendar. Why? Because the Pope, when did he do that? 1800s? Oh, 1500s. The Pope changed the calendar. And he called that the new calendar. So we have our own calendar. But these bishops thought, hey, let's not, let's not keep it up with the times. Look at all the countries are on the new calendar. So let us, let us change the calendar. So, the big mason in Constantinople and the big mason in Greece, they're going to change the calendar. They changed it. And their Masonic buddies in Antioch, Alexandria, the patriarchates, they followed suit. They changed it also. After all, they have to follow their Masonic brothers. And the majority of Orthodox churches did not want to follow. So that happened in 1924. One year later, one year later, God, having pity on his people, made a miraculous sign. On the exaltation of the cross, at a church outside of Athens, where they were celebrating the exaltation of the cross on September 14th, according to the church calendar. Because now it's been a year since the Masonic Bishop of Athens, he changed the calendar and they had already celebrated. They had already celebrated the exaltation of the cross two weeks earlier, according to the new calendar. But the simple and wise people of Greece who understood that this is not right resisted the change of the calendar. And so they gathered together at this church secretly because they were being persecuted by the new calendar bishops and the state. So they gathered secretly at this church and there were hundreds, hundreds of people gathered. And in the middle of the vigil at night, in the sky, above this church, which is named after St. John the Theologian, on Mount Hymettus. <clears throat> For one hour, the cross appeared as a light in the sky. And it was hovering over the church. I hope we have a nice picture of it. Let's put that up. It was hovering the people were in the church were, were told, look outside, there's a sign. A sign, there's a cross is there. And the vigil went on. The priests looked. The chanters continued to chant. In fact, I knew one person that was there. 
And she said it was an amazing sight. She never forgot for the rest of her life. The cross appeared over the church and then gradually over one hour it went up, 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 up until it stood straight. Well, by that time, it, the news had gone around all over Athens and hundreds of people, more, came. And the police heard about it from the Archbishop of Athens. And so they sent a contingent of policemen to go out there and disperse the people. There's no more church. Because <clears throat> we found out they're celebrating the exaltation of the cross. The police came, and when they saw the cross, as good Orthodox Christians, they knelt and did their cross and say, Lord, have mercy. And they did nothing. The next day, it was in the newspapers how this great sign occurred. Now, it is a sign. God was showing to the people, and yes, even to the bishops. He is not pleased with the change of calendar. I think the meaning of the sign was that God is not pleased in the direction of the church because Christ is the one that directs the church. As you could see in the icon here of the mystical ark, that Christ is holding the rudder. He is directing the church. But in those days, who was directing the church? The Masons were directing the church. And what's going to happen in 40 years? In 1965, they're going to go into the heresy of ecumenism. They're going to fall into the abyss. Forty years later, what happened? Another Masonic patriarch of Constantinople decided his name is Athenagoras. He decided changing the calendar is not enough. We have to go further. After all, he's a, he's a Mason. And they have a different religion. He notified all his Masonic buddies that in December, December of 1965, that year, he, on his own authority, is going to lift the anathema against the Pope. And the Pope agreed to lift his anathema against the Orthodox. Oh, how wonderful. And he told his buddies, his Masonic patriarchs, when I do this, I don't want any objection from any of you. Just be quiet and follow me. And so, on December 7, of all days that they picked, their announcement was made, the Pope Paul, I think, yeah. And Patriarch Athenagoras lifted the mutual anathemas. Oh, how wonderful! And then they embraced each other and kissed each other and prayed with each other, for after all, Athenagoras was a mason. And the Pope, he has, he has a Masonic uh, obelisk right in his Vatican Square.
So what happened? None of the patriarchs objected to this lifting of anathema. Neither, nor did any of the autocephalous churches or the autonomous church. No one objected except for our church, the Russian church abroad, and a few Greeks whom we ordained in Greece. No one objects it. Now we have ecumenism for about 56 years. And what is the effect that it have on all the new calendar ecumenists? It had a disastrous effect on them. Because now they took the rudder, the rules of the church, and since they have apostatized from orthodoxy, they have no fear of God to disobey God's laws. For example, the 45th Apostolic Canon. Let a bishop, presbyter, or deacon who has only prayed with heretics be excommunicated. When the official statement was made in 1965, it was a profound event in the history of orthodoxy. We call it the great apostasy because they all agreed to accept the Roman Catholics and all their errors, canonical errors, dogmatical errors, everything and their tradition to accept all that meant you fall away from the church. You are no longer an orthodox, a true Orthodox Christian. You may call yourself an Orthodox Christian. And I think this is the biggest trap for so many people. In 1965, when this happened, I remember, I was just a young man. 20 years old or so, and I said, this, is, this doesn't sound right, this is bad. And I waited for a bishop to come from Syria, and I was going to ask him, what is the meaning of this? Why is our Antiochian church following in the footsteps of this ecumenical movement? And I met him and asked him, and the only answer I was given, you can never forget it, we have to follow the Greeks. Now, it's quite obvious then that this bishop wasn't very educated. He was probably chosen because he had a good voice and he knew how to chant. But as far as having some kind of theological we have to follow the Greeks? What kind of... No one has to follow falsehood. Nobody has to follow someone off a cliff. But they did not change. No one changed. Everybody is in the ecumenical movement. And all you people who say, well, Jerusalem is in the ecumenical movement, but they get the holy fire. Don't be ever tricked by that deceitful thought from the devil. The holy fire comes down for all Orthodox Christians across the world. It's a great comfort for us to know that on the Saturday before Pascha, there's a miracle that happens in Jerusalem. And it's not because of the patriarch of Jerusalem. It's in spite of the patriarch of Jerusalem. There are many times 
the patriarch goes in with his unlit candles, and lo and behold, someone else outside the church gets the light before he does. So the holy fire comes down for the consolation of all Orthodox Christians. So don't be deceived by the fact that Jerusalem, of all places, of all patriarchates, gets the holy fire, and that therefore that proves, since they are in communion with the Greeks, with the Antiochians, with the people of Alexandria, or, or Russia, that every, everything is just fine because they're in communion and they get the holy fire. No, they are all in heresy. If you are a heretic, you cut yourself off from Christ. There is no other de uh, definition of it. Throughout the history of orthodoxy, all the Holy Fathers fought against heresy. They would never, ever unite with it or be in communion with them. If you're in communion with a heretic, you become a heretic. You are forbidden to pray with anybody who is a heretic. That's part of the rules of the Orthodox Church. We cannot rub shoulders or go before an altar and pray with a Muslim or a Jew and think that that prayer is acceptable before the one and only God whom they do not recognize? No, it's not possible. And there's nowhere in the history of orthodoxy that we are told that we must follow the majority. Nowhere. In fact, the Gospel says different. And the scriptures in the Old Testament say different. Do not follow the majority to do evil, it says in the Old Testament. And Christ says, it is God's pleasure, to, O little flock, to give you the kingdom. And Christ says, do not follow the broad way that leads to destruction. Because all the bishops, except for our church, are either heretics or schismatics. And it can be proven, it can be shown that this is true. So everybody should beware. When someone does an official statement, like happened in 1965, the whole synod of the Patriarch of Constantinople agreed. The Patriarch lifted the anathema. And that's an official statement. That means they're, they're professing their faith, they're confessing their faith, which is not orthodox. So, if you're a Greek, and you go to this church that has hundreds of people, and it has a hepper downstairs in the basement, the Masonic Lodge, of a heifer downstairs. Do, are you justified? Are you justified by staying there just because the multitude stayed there? Whereas the, the bishop is probably, most likely, a mason. Same with the Antiochians. So they have this big organization now. And all our members of the Ecumenical World Council of Churches. 
all the patriarchates. There's a big organization. It would be wonderful if they remained true to orthodoxy, but they all fell away. They all fell away. When the Patriarch of Constantinople comes here, he says it even on TV. National TV of America. That we all worship the same God, whether you call him Allah or Yahweh or Jesus Christ or whatever. We have the same Heavenly Father, whatever we call him. And as being his... We of all religions children, have the same Heavenly Father. Of course, God is but one. Uh, independently on the name uh, we give him, uh, Allah or, or uh, Yahweh, right. and so on. He, with shame, bold, boldly, he said it in... And that's because he's a mason. He is not orthodox. He calls himself orthodox, but he's a mason. A mason is not a bishop. So I call upon all Christians, all orthodox Christians, leave. Leave those heretical churches so you will not be judged by our Lord and Savior. Because he says, and St. Paul says, the church is spotless. It's infallible. It doesn't make mistakes like this to accept all religions and want to unite with them. There's only one church that God gave the human race for the salvation of everybody. Let me ask you, would you want to have your leader, the archbishop of your church or patriarch, a mason, would Ask yourselves, would St. John Chrysostom, St. Basil the Great, or St. Gregory Palamas ever join a church that has a mason at their head? Masonry is a filthy religion. It's a worldwide religion. And Orthodox Christians have no business having anything to do with it. It's something that should be renounced publicly, publicly. So, you, so all the people in their church would know that you are not allowed to be a Mason. They will not do that. And if they do not do that, you know they are hiding. Masonry, the pagan religion of Masonry, gave birth to the deadly heresy of ecumenism. If they will not renounce ecumenism, the heresy of the last times, that's what it's called, and it's called also the heresy of heresies, because it wants to bring together all the condemned heretics From the very beginning, the Arius, the Arians, the Nestorians, the Monophysites, they all reappear in a different form, but they're the heretics of nowadays. And now they want to bring them together out of some kind of brotherly love. If your leaders will not condemn ecumenism, and the, the ecumenists, then you know they are part of them. 
So all Orthodox Christians who have Masons as your head, because in Orthodoxy, you have to have an Orthodox leader. You have to have your bishop as Orthodox and purely Orthodox, because that makes you pure, because you follow him. But if you ask him, are you a Mason? He will be he will be too ashamed to say, yes, I am a Mason. So he will not say that he is a Mason, but he also will not say that he is not a Mason because Masons have taken an oath, a blood oath, a death oath, that they will never renounce their religion. And Masonry is a religion and they will never renounce it. They will never say, I am not a Mason. Therefore, you will know that they are lying. So, beware, be careful. Ecumenism, Masonry, and all of this modernism that has happened now in world orthodoxy it's because of these heretical ideas that have crept in to the church and defiled it. So we're going to end this video by reading the anathema of the Russian Church Abroad in 1983 against the heresy of ecumenism. To those who attack the Church of Christ by teaching that Christ's Church is divided into so-called branches which differ in doctrine and way of life, or that the Church does not exist visibly but will be formed in the future when all branches or sects or denominations and even religions will be united into one body, and who do not distinguish the priesthood and mysteries of the church from those of the heretics, but say that the baptism and Eucharist of heretics is effectual for salvation. Therefore, to those who knowingly have communion with these aforementioned heretics or who advocate, disseminate, or defend their new heresy of ecumenism under the pretext of brotherly love or the supposed unification of separated Christians. Anathema. Let us end this video by remembering and paraphrasing the great Saint Philaret of New York, the Confessor, who said, there are no jurisdictions with God. There's only the one true Orthodox Church. And outside her, that's all there is, is heresies and schisms. May God enlighten you all to do the right thing. Thank you for watching.